As someone who's been to med school, I know the value of a good mnemonic. Sometimes the MCAT can get really conceptual and you need to go a little bit deeper, but sometimes you just have to memorize a list of words. And so this is why I want to talk about my five favorite MCAT mnemonics. Now, the first mnemonic is Snowdrop. This is an invaluable one for most students, especially because the MCAT tests analytic techniques so highly on actual test day. And so Snowdrop is used to tell the difference between the different types of blots. So Snowdrop stands for Southern, Northern, and Western blot, and that works for DNA, RNA, and protein. The, the O's don't actually stand for anything, but Snowdrop didn't really make sense. So Snowdrop, Southern, Northern, Western is DNA, RNA, and protein. Now the second mnemonic is one of my favorites. Now this is one used more for the electrochemistry side of things, that's batteries. And this is my favorite for a couple of reasons, but one is that it works for literally every single type of battery, whether we're talking galvanic, voltaic, concentration cells, electrolytic cells, this mnemonic works for all of them. And that mnemonic is you have two pets, you have a red cat and an ox. Now what that means is the red cat portion tells us that the reduction always occurs at the cathode, and the anode is always for oxidation. Now the bonus here is that you can't mess this up if you speak proper English, and like I don't mean like proper fancy English, but an red and an cat don't make sense grammatically. So if you know that you're dealing with reduction, cathode, anode, and oxidation, there's only one way to pair those things up. You have an ox and a red cat. Reduction always at the cathode, and the anode is always oxidation. The third mnemonic is, is one of my favorites because I really love when a mnemonic works in more than one way. Um, I'll explain to you what I mean by this here in a second, but often you'll have mnemonics that that function and like they give you one set of information, but the way they are they work, they also give you a different set of information. So you get double value out of these mnemonics. And this leads me to my favorite mnemonic, flat peg. Now, flat peg is used to talk about the different hormones from the anterior pituitary. I want to be clear here. This is the anterior pituitary, not the posterior pituitary. The posterior pituitary has its own hormones, like antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. But your anterior pituitary releases hormones that work with flat peg. So that's F is follicle stimulating hormone, otherwise known as FSH. L stands for luteinizing hormone, which is LH. A is ACTH, which is adrenocorticotropic hormone. T is TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone. So that takes care of the flat portion. What about the PEG portion? Now PEG stands for prolactin, endorphins, and growth hormone. So that's prolactin, endorphins, and growth hormone. So that's, you know, kind of this list of hormones from the anterior pituitary. So what about that second set of information that I was talking about, right? The reason this is one of my favorites is because, yes, it also tells us the seven hormones, the seven main hormones released from the anterior pituitary, but also it separates them into FLAT and PEG. So the hormones released from your anterior pituitary fit into a couple of different categories. Some hormones are direct hormones, like they go out and directly have effects on organs throughout the body, like growth hormone changes the metabolism in your muscles and makes your bones grow. Um, but then we also have hormones that are more tropic in nature. That is, these are hormones that go to other endocrine glands and then make them do things like release hormones. And so they're kind of middle messengers. So note that FSH, LH, ACTH, and TSH are all tropic hormones. These are hormones that go to other endocrine organs. FSH and LH go to the gonads, um, that's the ovaries and the testes, depending on uh, which sex we're looking at. Um, ACTH, it goes to the adrenal gland, that's what the adreno and adrenocorticotropic hormone stands for. And then TSH obviously goes to the thyroid, as thyroid stimulating hormone. All of those are different endocrine glands, and those hormones go to those glands. Prolactin, endorphins, and growth, growth hormone all go to just different regions of your body and have an active, immediate effect. And so those are the direct hormones. So that's why flat peg is one of my favorite mnemonics because the pituitary is a pretty complex topic and this helps us not only know the different hormones but also categorize them and separate them into the different types. Now the next mnemonic is one that I uh, really found useful for the MCAT, but also going past the MCAT into medical school. So this makes this an extra valuable one. And that's dealing with neurology, specifically the spinal cord. 
So our spinal cord has different neurons. Like there are some neurons that bring in sensory information so I can feel what's going on when, you know, somebody touches my hand. And then there's motor neurons that go out to my hands to allow me to move my hand out of the way when some rando on the bus is touching my hand. So we have these, these neurons bringing signals in. We have neurons bringing signals out. And so our body also, we, we characterize these as afferent and efferent neurons. That's afferent with an A and efferent with an E. Um, I tend to overpronounce the, the first letter of that. So afferent and efferent. That's not how it's actually pronounced, but that I feel like it really helps students kind of consolidate that. So keeping straight which neurons are which, and even then like looking at the spinal cord, the front of the spinal cord is dealing with different neurons from the back of the spinal cord. So how do we keep all of this straight? Well, that's where same Dave comes in. So same Dave tells us that the sensory is afferent and motor is efferent. And then, so that's the same portion. But then as we look at the Dave, so that tells us that dorsal is afferent and ventral is efferent. This is really useful as if any of you guys are gonna go into neurology, note that if somebody damages the back of their spinal cord, but they left the front intact and so the front of the spinal cord isn't really damaged, what you've damaged is the dorsal portion of your, of your spinal cord. Note that dorsal is the back, like the dorsal fin of a shark, which is what sticks up out of the water as they, they run through the water and ventral would then be front. So if you damage the back of the spinal cord, Dave tells us that dorsal is afferent, but same, tells us that the sensory is afferent. So if we damage the back of our spinal cord, what's gonna happen is I'm going to have effects with sensation in my legs, for example, but my motor neurons are probably gonna be fine because the motor neurons are on the ventral portion. Those are the efferent neurons. And so same Dave can be really useful to keep track of all of those different things. Um, and I'll admit that there are some neurologists I know that still kind of in the back of their head say same Dave when they're thinking about what's going on with the spinal cord. So this takes us to the last of the five mnemonics. And this is also one of my favorite ones because it's providing information in more than one way. You guys know that I love that. That's why I really like flat peg as a mnemonic. But this one is cut the pie. And so this is a mnemonic for dealing with the nucleotides, right? Like if we look at DNA, it's made of A's, T's, C's, and G's. If we look at RNA, it's also sometimes got uracil in there. Actually, it's always got uracil instead of thymine. But if we look at this and we're trying to keep track of which ones are which, the MCAT is really going to expect you to, on test day, be able to look at a nucleotide and know like, is this a purine? Is it a pyrimidine? Kind of like which nucleotide might this be? And so having some way to separate that can be really useful. And so that's where cut the pie comes in. So cut the pie tells us that C, U, and T are pyrimidines. And that extra piece of information I was, I was talking about is that if you think about a pie, it's just a single ring. So your pyrimidines all have just a single ring. That's cytosine, uracil, and thymine all have just a single ring in their structure. The adenine and guanine, they have two rings, but that's not like a pie, so that makes sense. So it shouldn't look like a pie because it's cut the pie. So hopefully those mnemonics are really useful to you on test day. They're good ones to just kind of have in your back pocket and be able to pull out whenever the MCAT asks you a tricky question.